Okay, this is the P3 paper from October 2020. This is question number three. And as we can see, this is a uh, differentiation question. We've got to find f dash x and then talking about the range of a function here. Uh, let's look at fx. If fx is equal to that and I've got to find f dash x, I can see quite quickly I'm going to be differentiating using the quotient rule here. I've got u over v. Okay, let's make a start to it then. So part A, we have the fx is equal to 2x plus 3 all over 4x minus 1 square rooted is 4x minus 1 to the power of a half. So I'm going to say u is equal to 2x plus 3 and v is going to be equal to 4x minus 1 all to the power of a half. Let's get my du by dx, which is nice and easy. That's 2. Let's get my dv by dx. And so when we're doing this one, something to the power of a half. So something to the power of a half becomes a half. That's something to the minus a half. Treat it as though it is uh, u to the half. And then just differentiate u to the half. becomes half u to the minus a half. Once we've got that, multiply by the differential of what's in there. And the differential of what's in there is 4. Okay, let's just tidy that up because I know I'm going to be using it in a minute. That's going to be 2. I'll leave it as 4x minus 1 to the minus half, but I know that that's going to cause me some issues later on when we're doing the quotient rule. Okay, let's talk about the quotient rule then. So the quotient rule, various different ways people um, have of remembering it, first, if, second, and all that sort of stuff. Um, I think about it as being v du by dx minus u dv by dx all over v squared. Quite happy for you to stick with whichever method you've been taught, whichever method you find um, easiest to do. The issue is now going to be putting all this information in. So v du by dx is those two. And I'm going to write it sensibly. I'm not going to write v du. I'm actually going to put the two first. That's two times 4x minus one to the half minus u dv by dx, which is going to be 2x plus 3 times 2, 4x minus 1 to the minus half, and then all over v squared is just going to be 4x minus 1 to the half squared. Well, that's going to be nice to tidy up a little bit here. So if I now next line down, again, it's entirely up to you how you want to pursue this. I'm going to call this 2, 4x minus 1 to the half. And then the other bit I'm going to put as a fraction. So that's minus 4x plus 6, these two bits times together. And because it's 4x minus 1 to the minus half, I'm actually going to put that over 4x minus 1 to the half, that's the numerator divided by now, with the magic of my iPad, I can just put this down here, over, and then 4x minus 1 to the half squared. Well, that's nice and easy. That tidies up, doesn't it? So that's 4x minus 1. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to concentrate on the numerator here. And if I'm doing that, what I can do is if I call that a 1 there, I can then do this times this, this times this, all over this times this. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to get 2. 4x minus 1 to the half times 4x minus 1 to the half is 4x minus 1. They do that sort of thing, so that works out to be relatively neat. Be careful here. This is minus... All of that bit is minus there, so it's going to be, I'm going to do it now rather than forgetting about it, it's going to be minus 4x 
minus six. Don't forget that, that that one will change to a minus there. That's an important one. I'm going through and tidying up our algebra here. All over these two times together. So that's 4x minus one to the half. And then that, that's just the numerator, remember. That's all divided by 4x minus one. Now let's just focus on this little bit. If I divide by that, and then divide by that, I can do that all in one go. So I'm gonna do that next. So let's just leave the other bit the same. You could do it all in one go here, but um, in order to make it clear to the examiner, all I'm doing is tidying up these two bits here now, and I'm calling that 4x minus one to the three over two as I will say number of times on this uh, explanation. You can go this, go through this at your own pace. You can do it in a slightly different way. As long as you end up with the same answer as me, um, it doesn't really matter how you get there. I'm gonna multiply out that bracket then. So that's eight X minus two minus four X minus six, all over four X minus one to the three over two. And you start to feel a little relatively confident here that when we're getting that, this is all tidying up to something relatively neat here. So the 8x minus 4x is 4x, and the minus 2 minus 6 is minus 8, all over 4x minus 1 to the 3 over 2. And now at least I've got that in its simplest form. If it hadn't said in its simplest form, I'd have pretty much stopped about there and then started trying to stick values in depending on what the second part of the question was asking. But here it did say in its simplest form, so I'm relatively experienced enough to know I've got to keep going down to, at that point there, I know, I know I've finished at least when we're actually going through and doing that part. Right, okay, a lot of algebra there, but that's fair enough, it's a P3 exam. B, what is it asking us for for part B? Can we find the range of the function? Yeah, so just remember when they're asking you for the range of a function, a lot of the time they're asking you to look at the sketch, or if you didn't have a sketch, to try and sketch it out first of all, because the range of this function are those y values there. From the biggest y value, we can see that goes off to infinity, so I'm not worried about that, to that point there, which really means, I now understand what they're asking. When they're saying find the range, they're really saying, can I find the minimum point? And then the range the y values will be from whatever this value is here upwards. Okay, let's explain it to you. Let's explain it to the examiner. So if we go back here, um, just say we need to find the minimum point. And then that, of course, fits in. We need to find the minimum point. That fits in with the first part that I've just done, the idea about finding f dash x here, because for the minimum point, f dash x is equal to zero which means 4x minus eight all over 4x minus one to the three over two equals zero. And again, this is another standard technique that they'll do. This is horrible and complicated and would be difficult to solve as any sort of equation. But when I'm getting a fraction equals zero, the bottom bar can't be zero. I don't need to worry about that part there. This now simplifies down to 4x minus eight equals naught which gives me x equals two. And of course that makes sense going back and looking at the graph that there's only ever gonna be one minimum point here. So that all makes sense as we're going through. I don't want the x, I want the y value because that's gonna give me my range. So if I want the y value, what I've gotta do is find f2, so two lots of two plus three all over, um, root, what was it, 4x minus 1, I might as well do that as 8 minus 1 there, that works out to be equal to root 7, put into the calculator. So the range of values then, so range of fx, um, if you're going to say it properly, it's the set of real numbers, and fx has to be greater than or equal to root seven. Just going back and looking at that, okay? 
minimum value there, the y value is root seven. So the range of values is all those values there. They're all real and obviously um, up to infinity. So we just say greater than root seven, greater than or equal to root seven. Hopefully, uh, sorry, that should be greater than, greater than or equal to root seven. Hopefully that all makes sense.